Hi there, I am Sumit Bansal and in this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate months between two given dates in Excel. Now this may seem like an easy problem to solve, but it's not because not every month is just 30 days. Some are more, some are less. So in this video, I'm going to use some functions that you may not have even heard about or may not have used in a very long time to solve this problem. So let's see how it's done. So here I have the start date in column A and the end date in column B and I want to count the total number of months in between these two dates. And the function that I'm going to use for this is called date diff function which stands for date difference. Now when I'm typing this function you might have noticed that it didn't show up in the IntelliSense and the reason for this is that this is one of the undocumented function in Excel. It's not there documented in the Excel application. However, Microsoft does have a page about this function where you can get all the details. So I have a link here. I will also give you the link in the description. But just to show you the documentation, this is what Microsoft tells us about this function, which is called date diff. Now, this function takes three arguments. The first one is the start date, the end date, and the unit. Now start date and end date is something that we already have. The unit is something that we will have to specify and the unit here is going to be something like a Y in double quotes if you want to get the total number of completed years between two dates. In our case we are going to use this one which is M in double quotes because we want to get the number of complete months in between the two given dates. Now you can also use D for number of days. You can use MD if you want to get the number of days left after all the completed months have been uh, accounted for and you can read through this. But one thing that I want to highlight in this case is a known issue with this parameter with this argument called MD. Now when you use MD, there is a possibility that it may give you a wrong result. Now in our case, we are not going to use MD because we want to get the total number of months between two dates. So we are safe. So let's use this function. I have the start date here, the end date here and as the third argument, I'm going to put M in double quotes. And now when I hit enter, it gives me eight here. And now when I drag it down, it gives me this result. Now, one very important thing you need to know about this function is it is not counting the number of days in between two given dates. For example, it is not counting whether 30 days have elapsed or 31 days have elapsed. It is actually looking at the dates. For example, in this case, when I have five uh, 5th April here and 5th December here, it is actually checking whether a complete month has gone by or not. It doesn't matter whether the month has 30 days or 31 days or 28 days, the month has to complete. So in this case, it gives me eight because it can figure out that total eight months have completed from April to December. But if I come here and I make this, let's say, for December, then it will give me seven. It doesn't give me eight in this case because it still thinks that I'm one day short of completing the entire month. So it will always complete the entire month and then count it rather than counting the number of days. Also, it doesn't count the first date, which is the starting date. So I'll show you an example in this case, but let me show you a couple of more interesting things. Here at the bottom, I have 1st January and 31st January. In total, there are 31 days in between these two dates. And you can see the function still gives me zero, which says it uh, there are no complete months that, ha that have completed in between these two dates, which is right because 1st January is in January and 31st January is also in January. Now, as I mentioned, it does not count the start date. So if you want to change that, maybe what you can do is come here and from the start date, you can subtract one if you want it to count the first date as well, the starting date. And in this case, now it gives me one because now it understands that from 1st January to 31st January, one complete month has elapsed. So it gives me one as the number of months. And as I mentioned, it doesn't really look at the number of days. For example, let's do this. Let me remove this part here. So now as of now, it is 1st January to 31st January. There are 31 days in, in between these two dates. Even if I don't count the start date, there are 30 days in between these two. Let's uh, look at this example where I 1st February and 21st February, and it gives me zero. But if I come here and I change this to 1st March, despite the fact that in between these two dates, it's still 28 or 29 dates, depending on whether you count the start date or not, it still gives me one because it realizes that the month of February has been completed. So as I mentioned, it is not counting the number of days, it is actually checking the actual month completion or not. Now, if you want to get the number of months and then the number of days, we can use the MD argument we saw uh, in the documentation. While Microsoft says that the argument could be faulty, so you'll have to use it with caution. But if you want to get it quickly and see whether the result looks fine or not, you can do that. So in this case, I would use date diff where this is my start date 
this is the end date and now when I use MD in double quotes it is going to give me the number of days that ha that are remaining after all the month uh, has been removed all the completed months have been removed so if I drag this down you can see it says seven months and 29 days and if I make this 5 December then it will tell me eight months and zero days so if you want to get how many months and how many days separately you can use the date diff function now let's see another way of doing this using the year frac function so here I have the start date and end date and I want to calculate the total number of months and I'm going to do that by using this function called year frac which is year fraction. Now this takes three arguments. The first one is a start date, then the end date and then the basis which I'll tell you what it is. But what it does is it is going to take these number of days into account and then give me what is the fraction of the year that is in between these two given dates. So for example, in this case, if I choose start date here, end date is here and then the basis. Now in the basis there are these five options. 30 by 60 means that every month is 30 days and the, the entire year is going to be 360 days. Uh, then there is actual by actual which means actual number of days in a month and actual number of days in a year. If it is a leap year it would be 366 else 365. Then there is actual by 360 so actual number of months in a day but the year would be 360. So based on it the fraction would differ a little bit. Now these are mostly used in financial and accounting but in this case what I'm going to use is use actual by actual and now when I hit enter it gives me this fraction now as I also mentioned earlier this is the same case here it does not include the start date so if I want to include the start date I can just subtract one from the start date values now when I hit enter it includes 5th April as well as 3rd December and now I can drag this down but this is the fraction of the year it is not the number of months so to con convert this into number of months I'm going to multiply it by 12 and let's copy this down. Now it's formatted as a date here because in the adjacent column also there are dates. Sometimes this happens. So I'm going to change the format and show it as uh, decimal. So I'm going to go to the home tab and here in this drop down, change this to general. So now it shows me these values. Now 7.9890 and whatever means there are seven months and then the remaining days are in a fraction which is 0.98. Here it is 16.8 months. Now if you only want the total number of completed months, I can just come here and add the int function. So it is only going to give me the integer part from this and now when I drag this down, it gives me the total number of months. Now, as I said, it is not looking at the month value. It is just looking at the number of days in between the, the, these given two dates. Let me explain. So here I have 1st January and here I have 31st January. Now in between these two dates, there are 31 days and it has given me one month, which is fine. But see here, I have 1st February and then I have 1st March. Now in between these two dates, there are 29 days and it gives me zero because 29 as a fraction of this function, as a fraction of the year, it is not giving me the value that will give me one complete month. As a fraction, it would probably, probably give me 0.95 month or something similar to it because there are only 29 days. So this function actually takes into account the number of days in between two given dates. So if this is something you want, maybe you're doing project management, project uh, timeline management or financial management, then maybe you can use this function. Now let me show you one more scenario where we are going to use the year and the month function. So here I have the start date and the end date. And what I want to know in this case is how many months are there in between two dates, but I'm not really looking at the number of days or the number of completed months. If that month is there in between these two dates, I want it listed. For example, in this case, I want these months to be April to December. I'm not interested whether December has been completed or not, or how many number of days are there. As long as these two months are there in these two dates, I want them to be counted. So what I'm going to do is use this function called year. So year of the end date minus year of the start date. And now when I hit enter, it will give me zero, but in some cases it would give me one because there is one entire year difference between these two dates, 2025 and 2026. Now I want the number of months. So let's multiply this by 12. So now this is going to give me a difference of 12 months or zero months based on the year value. And then I also want to now count the number of months in between these two dates. So I would use the month function. So month of the end date minus month of the starting date. And now when I hit enter, it gives me eight and I can drag this down. Now, 
what this does is it is going to tell me how many number of months are there how many number of months are there in between these two dates from starting from april till december but because i have just used month of b2 minus month of a2 it is not going to count the starting date month which is which means it is not going to count april so if i want to count it i would just add one here so now when i drag it down this is my final result. What it does is it is going to count how many months are there in between April and December without looking at the actual dates. So here, similarly, if I come, let's say here in this case, it will give me one because there is only one month between 1st January and 31st January. So this is something which is which could be useful. If you just want to know how many different months are going to be there in between two dates, then you can use this method. Now that I've shown you all the three methods, let me also quickly show you a comparison between the results of these three different methods. So here I have the start date and the end date. And if you're using the dated diff function, it gives you the total number of completed months. If you're using the year frac function, then it gives you the months as a fraction. So you can see here, it gives me 7.93, which means seven completed months and 0.93, which is the remaining part of the month that is in between the start date and the end date. And year and month function will give you how many number of different months are covered in between the start and the end date. So in most cases, actually in every case, this is going to be either equivalent or higher than the value given by data day function and year frac function. For example, in this case, uh, from 20th January to 17th March, this gives us one because there is only one complete month. This gives us 1.90, which is also one month and 0 0.90 part of the month. But this gives us three because there are three months in between these two dates, January, February, and March. So based on your situation, you can choose which function is going to be better for you to use when you're calculating the total number of months. That's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Also, if you're liking these videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and click on the bell icon so that you never miss out on any new Excel tips video I come up with. Thank you and have a nice day.